Eating, so, yeah, he does like eating. So <laughs> what stops him is getting candy. That's the only thing that stops him from asking for candy. Is that right? Yeah. During the week, if we show up, and Noah will know the answer to this one. During the week, if you guys come with me to church, what's the first thing Blake does? <laughs> That's right. He asks Regine for a sucker. And what does Regine do? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Now, I say all this because Blake is determined. Blake is determined. He does not give up easily. And I talk about candy, Caitlin, but it's true for just about anything. It's one of Blake's greatest qualities. He does not give up. He won't give up. No matter how many times he falls, does he stop climbing? No. No matter how many times he does, so he tries. He tries and he tries and he tries. And now sometimes that's annoying when it's things he shouldn't have, right? But isn't that also really great? Isn't that... <laughs> Isn't it, awful, isn't it also really great that when he really wants something, when he really thinks something is important, when he really needs something, he will not stop until he gets it? Sometimes that's so, that's going to be so good. Sometimes. Sometimes. Like sometimes he wants to go on a walk, and I don't want to go on a walk. And but guess what happens? We go on a walk. Sometimes I don't want to have breakfast for dinner, but you all want to have breakfast for dinner, and we end up having breakfast for dinner. Sometimes it's really, really great. And so I bring this up because in our scripture today, Jesus tells a story on which a woman was wronged, and the people that were supposed to fix it wouldn't. She was wronged, and no one would fix it. And so she asked over and over again to, for those people who were supposed to fix it, to fix it. And they didn't care. They didn't want to do it. They didn't care that that woman was wronged. They didn't care that she was hurt. They didn't care. But you know why they helped her? Because they knew she was going to keep asking and keep asking and keep asking. So what I wanted to talk about, or what I wanted to say today, is that we need to be relentless. We need to go after the things of our lives that we really want. We need to go after and, and have a lot of courage and strength to keep asking. But it's so important that we do it for the right things. To work out in the world and not to give up until things are made right. To work out in the world and not to give up until people do what they're supposed to do. To work out in the world and not give up until everybody has a friend. Until everybody gets what they need. Until the world around us is a better place. Not just to use, use it for candy. Amen? All right. Head on over. Miss Deborah will help you all out. Make sure to go everywhere. There's lots of people upstairs today.
Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 121. We will read it responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. This is the well, this is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right. So uh, today, um, today I wanted to make sure I did I did think of an announcement or two after the announcement time. Uh, first of all, is that next Sunday is trunk or treat. Next Sunday is our Sort of, I, I think it's like more like a fall fun day, but it's a fall fun day with the trunk or treat and all that stuff. And this is a fun day meant, meant for everyone, not just the kids who'll be getting the candy. Um, we have a chili sign up. I think we needed one more chili there. And that's uh, next Sunday, uh, 4.30 at the Patents. So uh, please come, think about and then make sure you can come to that. And then our lunch group, um, our lunch group, this is for everyone. Someone asked me this week if somebody doesn't come to church can come. Yes, this is for everyone. Uh, somebody, uh, you know, can you, can you bring your sister? Sure. It, lunch. Restaurants allow everyone in nowadays. Shirts and shoes, I guess. Um, so, but we do have a sign-up sheet in the back, and you can just call Ray Jean by Tuesday morning because we do like to give the restaurant a heads up that we're coming, especially we're going to uh, Capuanas this time. And so chances are solid. We're not all going to be able to sit together because it's not really set up and made for having 15, 16 people to sit together. But it's a nice place to go eat. And, and I don't have to drive, so it's perfect. And uh, I hope you guys can come to that. And we do that, we do that once a month. So I think those are the things. And then the last one would be the uh, uh, fall youth retreat for middle and high school kids. I think we have about seven signed up or that told me they wanted to go, which is terrific. Uh, but also, uh, it, I think Ray Jean was supposed to send, and I'm sure she did, uh, an email to everybody who said they were gonna come and there was a link to like an internet line, a sign up registration. Um, if you haven't done that, registered with the Presbytery yet, uh, we need to do that soon. Um, because if you, you can sign up up through the 31st of October, but it's $20 cheaper if you sign up by Monday, if you sign up by Monday. Um, and it's just, just a lot of fun. So I hope, hopefully you guys can go to that. We have a lot of fun things happening in worship here soon too. And, and today's probably fun too, but we have a lot of extra things I should say. Uh, you know, next week after church, of course, we have our, our trip over to, for the, uh, to the patents for the, for the trunk or treat. And then the, the last Sunday is Reformation Sunday which is the, is the anniversary of that famous day in which Martin Luther nailed all the things he thought were wrong with the church onto the door and started or kicked off the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Uh, and so we have a fun, uh, a special service planned for that day uh, that we sort of work through the history of, and we work through the history of the Reformation uh, by looking at our creeds by looking at the creeds that our church and our denomination hold to be true and accurate descriptions of the Bible. And so that is going to be a wonderful day. I don't know, did we get the bagpiper? You didn't get the bagpiper, but that's okay. Um, that, you know, we have that, and then on the 6th is, uh, the 6th is All Saints Day, and so on the 6th, we will remember those who have passed over the past year. Um, now in church, you know, we would light the candle and ring the bell and remember. Yeah, now that's for congregation members and friends, but we want to remember everybody because as a congregation, we're really, in my opinion, made up of everyone our lives are made up of, our spheres of influence. 
And so we're going to have a, a, a forum in a, in, a couple, in a week or so, or maybe next week. Uh, uh, and so we just, we want all the names and connections of people who have passed that are, are a big and important part of your lives. And those will be remembered in kind of a special insert in the program. And we'll have also, in addition to that, uh, we'll have in the back a couple of tables because if you want to bring a picture or if you want to bring something, a memento. And, and for that, it doesn't have to be somebody who passed away in, since last November. Um, it, just to bring something, we'd like a, like a display, just set up for the day, set up for the worship service on that day. And then the next week, I'll be at Fall Youth Retreat. But it will be a wonderful day because it, we will be celebrating Veterans Day that day. And uh, Larry Bishop is going to be bringing the sermon and going to be bringing the message. And so that will be a fun and wonderful day. And I am excited to watch that uh, on a different time. So that is coming up. And then it just rolls in. I could keep going until Christmas and nobody wants that. But that's where that is. Now, uh, the scripture today uh, is uh, the parable of the persistent widow. And Luke 18, 1 to 8. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. This is wonderful. There are very few parables in the New Testament that give us the reason, that give us the main point at all, let alone ahead of time, and so obviously clear. So my sermon is easy today. Don't give up and always pray. Good? But this is the parable. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in the town that kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And so here we have a judge. And the judge is corrupt because the judge should care. But he doesn't. He's a judge. And this judge is there, and this is the judge that could help this poor widow, that could help this widow. And we're going to assume that the widow is legitimately in need of justice, because I think that's what's set up here. So we are assuming that this woman, that this widow, needs justice. And so we have someone here who, at the time and place of society, and really still today, is disadvantaged, who is asking the person who is supposed to help them for justice. But they don't care. They don't care. But so for some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God and I don't care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see to it that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. I don't know why you'd be afraid of that, but won't come and attack me. And so in the end, what happens here? This woman comes and is expected justice and is requesting justice of the person who should be bringing justice, and he is refusing it. And he is at his base someone who should not be a judge. He even knows in his personal thought process, that he doesn't fear God or care about people. So he won't judge it. But she keeps bothering him. She keeps coming. She is persistent. And he knows that it's just going to happen. It's just going to keep happening. Even to the point where he's afraid that at some point she might attack him. So this woman has to be persistent. This woman has to be someone also in great need of justice, because why would he be afraid that this widow would attack him unless she was in great need for justice, unless she was desperate for justice, unless he knew that what she was asking was right, unless he knew, unless he knew that he was wronging her by not granting justice. So he does. Gives them justice. 
And this justice, is it one because it's the right thing to do? This justice isn't one because of someone's morals. This justice isn't earned because the crowd of people around, because the whole neighborhood of folks, because the whole community gathered around this person and asked for it. This wasn't because some other judge came and said, you should do what your job. This justice was only granted through persistence. This justice was only granted through persistence. And in some ways, a physical fear. But she only grant, he only granted this justice through persistence. And the Lord says, listen to what the unjust says. And will not God bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out night and day? And so now we get this comparison because, of course, God is the ultimate judge. God is the judge of this universe. God is the judge of each and every one of us. God is the judge of all creation. He is the one who is intended and needed to bring justice. And he too knows, just like that unjust judge, that there is a lack of justice in our world. He too, like this unjust judge, knows that we have been wronged. Like there's people in this community who are wronged on a regular basis. Justice has not been served. And so... Won't God grant justice to those who cry out? This unjust judge doesn't care. This unjust judge doesn't care about justice, doesn't care about people, doesn't care about God. And yet he made justice true. He made this for this situation. He made it right through sheer persistence. Won't God do the same? Now let's be careful not to compare them too closely. I've, I've heard and seen people who read this and think that God only cares about those who ask over and over and over again, and I don't see that to be true. But why wouldn't God grant justice? God does care about us. God does care about justice. God is the ultimate source. Won't he, it says, Bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out day and night. And then continues. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. He will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? So here we have a call as clear as day. Here we have a call that you need no theological education to understand. It is a call to pray. It is a call to continue. It is a call to pray and not give up. It is a call to seek justice in this world and not give up. It is a call to pray for those around you and not give up. It is a call for us to work for justice for ourselves and for others without giving up. If you remember the sermon I just gave to the children, it's the same kind of idea as what I told them, but let's upscale it. We have persistence. We should have persistence, and not for the wrong things, but for the right things. Each and every one of us has something that we will not give up on, and it is important that we do that, put that amount of effort into the right things, into prayer, into asking over and over again for God to bring justice where we see injustice, for God to bring hope where we have hope. And I don't think it's just a call for prayer it says a call that we should always pray and not give up. And I don't think it just means we shouldn't give up praying, though it does. I think it's two different calls, that we should pray and that we should not give up. We should pray and we should not give up. So I think this is also a call for us to not get tired of doing good. 
of not get tired of fulfilling the roles and positions for which we have been called to as the body of Christ. To not give up on doing what is right. To not give up on what is good. To not give up on what is out there. When I first uh, came to Newark Church, this uh, person came up to me and she was, I'll just say, well-renowned for not giving up and her persistence. Well-renowned for that. And she came up to me and she told me, um, I would like you, and this is a great thing that she did, I was terrific. She came up to me and she said, I want to, you're new in town, you haven't been here, I want to line you up meetings with a bunch of important people in town. So you can get to know people and get to know folks around and they can get to know you. I said, that's terrific, thank you. And she did. She lined me up meetings with the, the people's in charge of the, of the business bureau. Of the, she lined up the mayor. Um, I had probably 10 meetings with c- c- what you would consider very important or influential people in the town. And time after time, I had these meetings. They said, the only reason I'm meeting with you is because Mary Ellen to- asked me, and I knew she wouldn't stop <laughs> until I said yes. The mayor said specifically, I don't meet with pastors like this anymore because it's hard to keep up with how many new pastors are in town, but I knew Mary Ellen wouldn't stop until I had this meeting. And we went on to have a great relationship with the mayor of that town, the mayor of Newark. Time and time again, I had an article in the newspaper that said, welcome to town, Pastor Steve. And the person who interviewed me said, we don't do this anymore because there's 50 churches and all our faith page would be is welcome to town, new pastor. But Mary Ellen asked. So here we are. Persistence. Now, Diana knows Mary Ellen. And uh, occasionally, that same persistence played out in different ways. I'll just put it there. Persistence. Persistence is important. But what is just as important is that we are persistent about the right things. We are persistent about things that are important and things that matter. Because that persistence can turn into be something that hurts the church. That consistent that persistence can turn into being something that isn't what God would have us do. I mean, we look out in the world. You know, I've often thought, and I don't know if this is true, but I've often thought that bad people seem to have more energy than good people. I seem to think that the people, and oh gosh, the way I said that, I made it, I I don't want you guys to think that I thought Mary Ellen was a bad person. She was not. Um, Sorry, I didn't want that connection made. Um, But... But you can, you can use these things for, for, for bad and for evil. And they're the people that are, are more persistent, that are more out there, that are more aggressive, tend to seem to be to me to be the people that are wanting the wrong things for our community, seem to be the people that want the bad things for our community, seem to be the more, the people, I don't know how else to say it, but the bad people. It seems to me, like if we look out in the world, that there are more people who they seem to have more energy than us. They seem to have more push and more drive. They seem to get more done. Persistence is important. But when we are persistent in the name of God, when we are persistent as a body of believers for Christ, boy, we better know. We better know for sure that what we're doing is persistent for the good things, is persistent for the right things. When I stand up here in the pulpit, if I'm not sure about something, I try to say that. I try to say that. I try to say, this is what I think. I said it earlier. I try to say there's more than one option, but this is the one I think is more correct. If I'm not sure about something, I say I think. When I'm not sure, I try to make that clear. Because when I'm up here, what I say matters. I 
knew a woman, and I mean, man, I knew more than one, but where she stayed in a marriage, yeah, I know, more than one woman, thank you, where she um, stayed in an abusive marriage for a decade or two because her pastor said, because her pastor said that divorce is a sin. I've seen so many people who have been hurt by what the pastor says, hurt by what the church says, hurt by what is declared, hurt by the amount of effort we have put into things that have been wrong or mis mis misaligned or misinformed. And so just as important as it is that we have persistence, just as important that it is that we work for the things of God, it is as important that we only declare that we only are putting all of our fight into things that we know are the things on God's heart. Amen? Amen. Now let's uh, sing our next hymn. Stand up and sing our next hymn, which is number 465. I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord.
join me in the unison prayer of dedication. We praise your almighty name. You have blessed our nation with immense wealth and opportunity. Lord, you have, com Lord, you have commanded us to honor you with our wealth, and I pray that you will be honored greatly this day as we give to you what is already yours. Bless these cheerful givers and bless the tithes and offerings that they give. We love you. Amen. Please be seated. Our prayer request for the day. Our prayer request for the day. Our, 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 um, here. Uh, we have a prayers for uh, Denise Johnson, who's a teacher at Bel Air and is battling breast cancer. Uh, for Carly Cooper, who is an eighth grader at Miami Trace and collapsed before the finish line at the cross country meet. Prayers for her. Uh, prayers for a friend of the Booths, who is experiencing homelessness and difficult circumstances. And then prayers uh, for the Shrivers, who we just heard about, who in there their uh, Southeast Asian mission. Prayers for them. Lord God, we come before you today in prayer, uh, asking uh, healing, asking for mercy, asking for those who are in need of shelter that they have it. Lord God, we know that you are a worker of miracles because there is no miracle for you. We know that you are a bringer of justice, a healer, the great God of this universe, and so we come to you in prayer today, asking for the Shrivers and their ministry in Asia that it be successful, that they be happy and healthy, Lord God, that they get what they need, that they are safe, and that their ministry flourishes where they are. Prayers for those who are homeless, like the Booth's friend. Prayers for them who have no safe or no consistent shelter. For Carly Cooper and whatever happened to her that made her collapse, Lord God, we pray that it be something that can be fixed and repaired, something that does not happen again. We pray for Denise Johnson and then her battle with cancer. You know, that is a difficult journey and a difficult battle, and we pray that she not be alone. We pray that the different uh, treatments work, and we pray that she is able to win that battle with her cancer. We pray for those who are in our program and bulletin on our hearts and minds, our co-workers in ministry, our friends who are dealing with cancers and surgeries and health needs, our servicemen and women here and overseas. And Lord God, we pray that we be people who doggedly chase who relentlessly chase after the things of your kingdom. That we work with effort, without giving up, for peace and justice, for things to be made better in this world and in our spheres of influence. And we continue to pray by saying that which you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So now let's all stand and sing our final hymn, closing hymn, number 350.